Now we're just at Quick Beats filming one of what would have to be one of the most powerful single cam VLs in Australia, I'd have to think. Certainly the most powerful we've filmed, north of 900 yeah. kilowatts. Yeah, we've had the pleasure of tuning CK's car today. Um, we've done a bit of a cocktail on fuels, just seeing what works, what doesn't. And um, we've done a cool swap from E85 to um, E98. And that showed some pretty cool yeah. results. We actually made less power on E98, which is what you'd probably expect to happen with a fuel that's got a higher octane and the engine that can't use it. So yeah, yeah. if we optimise ignition timing and mixture, we probably would have gone a little bit beyond, but we just wanted it for the safety buffer so we can turn some more boost. And mm. it's really impressed us today, well north of 900 kilowatt yeah, and yeah. And fairly easy. It sounds strong and it sounds like it's doing it easy. Yeah, it's just smooth. One of those reasons this is a little bit different, it's a billet block. Yeah, so CK opted for the billet block um, just to have no issues in the yeah. future with cracking yeah. and stuff. This particular one's a water block as well, because this is, believe it or not, it's a yeah. full street car. He drives car. this a lot, AKA Kimberly calls her. Um, yeah, she does a lot of miles and this thing is amazing. It's been reliable, it doesn't push any water. It's got a closed deck design, so you don't have those failure points that you do with a regular block. Yeah. Also the temperatures are lower, everything's just beautiful. Yeah, now I know it's got some trick electronics on it. Do you want to tell yeah. us a bit about that? So running an Mtron KV12 on this, it's got pretty much a four connector ECU. It's got inbuilt G meter and all that stuff, so you don't have to buy any extra boxes. 202 controllers on board, so that was actually beautiful. Today we had an O2 that bombed out. We just picked a secondary O2. Okay. It's already wide in the car, yep. you know, we've got that there as backup. That worked out really good. And then you, we got the MoTeC dash, cross communicates with the Mtron, select different boost modes, different launch targets. It's all done, all automated. Then you can go on to traction strategies, torque modeling, um, the list is just, it's huge of what you can do with this ECU. Just the closed loop control functions are great, uh, fuel pressure. So we, we can do it, we pretty much, in this car, we've done a fuel pump change on it because the last meeting it went 810, just over 81, I should say. Then we turned it up, yeah. it launched and it fuel surged. So the engine protection came in because we saw a fuel pressure differential move away. So that's come in and it's, it's tried to correct it, it couldn't correct it and it's obviously killed the motor. Today we've put a bigger pump on it and because of how good the fuel model is, the tuning was very minimal to get back mm. to our numbers. Yeah. You know, so it corrects and compensates so many ways. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's just been a pleasure to tune. It didn't miss a beat. It hasn't missed hiccup. It just sings. You guys yeah. seen it? Yeah, it yeah. just does it's what it's gone pretty full. Unlike a lot of dinos we go to. Yeah. You know, the yeah. power levels these cars are making now is uh, a bit ridiculous. But yeah. This also has a PDM in it. Correct. We've well. got a PDM 30. So Danny from Design Wire done a beautiful job wiring this car up. It's all twisted concentrically Tefcel mil spec wiring from pretty much indicators headlights it all goes through the PDM it's all controlled all the strategies are there to make it run factory so there's no hold there's no hold in no body no fuse box nothing. no nothing. nothing it's all PDM and that's again it's a beautiful thing you've got a yeah. fuel pump a prime pump it's about to die you see the current go right up and then it'll trip the circuit give you a warning and then got a DTC and the ECU will kill power, for example. So it's easy to diagnose. Very issues. easy to yeah, diagnose. Yeah, yeah. You're not sitting there pulling fuses. You'd be surprised what you learn just by looking at the current draw on some channels. You're like, wow, I didn't realise that yeah. was drawing that much current. And it can, it's usually a telltale when a, an auxiliary device is starting to fail. Yeah. And it starts to overload the yeah. circuit. So very good stuff. You don't see that on the fuse, you'll just pop it when it's too late. Mm, so. mm. And some of the other gear on it's got a precision. Thing. So we've got an 8891 on it. We're sort of maxing the exhaust housing on the dyno. We believe we're getting to yeah. the edge of the housing at the yeah. moment. So sort of pulled the pin on it a little bit today, but it's a PT8891, 60 mil gate. We're running a um, ATI balancer with crank trigger kit. Knock, actually we run knock control on this. It's been, people like oh, E85 doesn't knock, but it's a great microphone to have on your engine. So you can really zoom in on each cylinder mm. and see what they're doing. And um, again, that was great for us today. We got to see which cylinders were sensitive, especially with the fuel swap. You got to see what it done to the noise on the engine, gone from E85 to E98. Yeah, you don't need to run knock sensors, but we do recommend put them on. If your computer can do it, put yeah. them on. It's just more data yeah. for us to look at. Yeah. And what was this little, you pointed out this morning, what was this little switch here? Oh yeah, because CK's a bit old school, come from the V8 days. So he yeah. wanted, he wants to do his rockers a lot easier, guys. So all he has to do is get in here. <laughs> Bump the engine over and that's see cool, what happens. <laughs> Again, that's all wired through the PDM, yeah. and you can, you can. It's amazing. The possibilities are endless of what you can do with that. That's cool. Well, it's dry sump. Yeah, he's um. Yeah, dry it, sump. I should say we've got a dry sump any, on that. Hasn't um, cut any corners on this car. No. No, and again, even with the gearbox, we've got a, a dump valve in it too. And it's just, you know, everyone's talking about them these days. It just brings a boost up earlier. It's a M&M trans, and it's been maintained by Freddie at Pro Trans. Mm. 
Um, and I think it's got a next gen. Next gen, rent. yeah. So this car come from next gen. They've done the full chassis, yeah. roll cage, all the nine inch conversions, and set the car up for us to go race. They've done an amazing job. Like, I don't know if you guys have been around the car. Yeah, I had a look under it before. Yeah, yeah done a very yeah. good job. So Daniel's looked after us there. And yeah, and CK's pretty much put the car together from CK Automotive. He's, that's his car. Yeah, this, built was, the this whole was built. Lot. He said before this was actually a stock car. Yeah, yeah. full stock car. And um, I think it took him like a year or so and he got yeah. it all together. Yeah. He's done a wicked job and it's just come here for the EFI final touches. Yeah, yeah. And we pretty much control the fuel system on the car and, and the data on it. So between us and CK mm. and Next Gen, we've got a pretty cool combo, I reckon. Yeah, awesome. Well done. We'll uh, look forward to seeing it at the track, I guess. Yeah. yeah. Looking forward to see you guys. Right, kill it. Hopefully, one of seven. New in the full boost shop, we've got full boost long sleeve tees. These are navy, same as our new Barra tees, but long sleeve t-shirt. Girls tees in navy, small, medium, large. And due to popular demand, we've had kids tees. Heaps of people have asked us about kids tees. These are in, I think, a couple of different sizes. I'm not sure. No, size six at the moment. <laughs> All right, anyway, get on them at shop.fullboost.com.au.